for the past few years, fans of Godzilla have been begging for a new city-destroying, kaiju-slaying video game. Godzilla movies have come and gone, and the most Warner Bros could conjure up was a Candy Crush clone in 2014. We've begged for a Destroy All Monsters, Save the Earth and Unleashed remaster, but our cries went unheard. The last true console Godzilla game released eight years ago, and it wasn't exactly well received. The generator is losing power. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Godzilla is approaching the generator. The generator is losing power. Could a champion rise from the ashes of our hopes and dreams to deliver us a new kaiju game for the fans of the genre? Well, out of the shadows came Alex Rushdie, the director at 13AM Games, a Canadian studio that has come forward to bring us that new monster fighting game that fans of the genre have been craving. Dawn of the Monsters. We've been following this game very closely ever since we saw it announced back at G-Fest 2019, and the director promised fans of Godzilla that they'd be satisfied with the result. So, here we are, three years later, the game has just released. Was it worth the wait? Let's take a look at Dawn of the Monsters. I'm Alistair, and welcome to Danger. Dawn of the Monsters is a cooperative 2.5D beat-em-up game that harks back to the classics like Streets of Rage, King of the Monsters, and Godzilla Domination. Set in the year 2065, you can play any of four characters – the Godzilla-like Megadon, the Crustacean Ganera, the Ultraman-like Aegis Prime, and the Pacific Rim-like mech Tempest Galahad. They are part of Dawn, the Defense Alliance Worldwide Network established to protect humankind from evil Nephilim, giant monsters that awoke during climate catastrophes in the 2030s. You can either play by yourself or with a friend, with two-player couch co-op, and this is when the game really feels alive. It feels so good to be able to just play a game like this with your friends. Some of the best memories are made when you're actually interacting with people. I'll never forget having Halo nights with my friends playing split-screen multiplayer, so I really appreciate this game focusing on bringing this back, something that's sorely missed in this modern age of gaming. Although this aspect actually leads to one of the game's biggest missed opportunities, which we'll discuss later on in the video. But first I want to speak about what I really loved. The game is super easy to just pick up and go, you have light attacks, heavy attacks, and can even pick up buildings to throw, or artillery that can act as kaiju-sized guns, and even the heads of other recently deceased kaiju. I love carrying around their heads, it's like a warning to other monsters to not mess with me. As Megadon, my personal favorite, you can charge at enemies, which knocks them back, allowing you to regain some space. You can also dodge and perform a bunch of special rage attacks, including flame breath, as well as a huge explosion of fire and death. There's also epic cataclysmic attacks that you can perform if you fill your cataclysm meter, which, while rare, are always amazing to see. One of my favorite things to do is execute monsters, where you can disembowel and decapitate Nephilim enemies, which leads to blood gushing everywhere, and other enemies sometimes stop as if they just went, Oh shit, that was Dave he just killed! It's hilariously over the top and something I never get tired of doing. You can also augment your character's DNA, which allows you to shake up the gameplay, with some augmentations that benefit your attacks, health, or speed. You can customize your monster to your liking, and can even unlock skins and change the color of your character. So I went with this badass black and red evil variant for Megadon. As for the graphics, they are simplistic but do work to its advantage. Each character is super unique, the interactable objects are easy to spot, and it's appealing enough to keep your interest. It's designed to look like a combination between a comic book and an anime, with excellent human character design, imaginative monster designs, and surprisingly expressive animations. Each level has a surprising amount of variety in design, with changes in color palette, architecture, background, and overall themings. One level will have you fighting in the devastated city of Toronto, because of course a Canadian studio would want you to start off in their hometown. I see what you're doing, Alex. The next will see you fighting in the flooded streets of Brazil, and then the desert dunes of Egypt. 
and that's just a few of the many different settings. The changes in environment can also lead to new obstacles, such as tidal waves in Brazil, which can knock you back and lower your health, which helps create new challenges. Each level lasts between 8 to 10 minutes on average, so it's super easy to just jump in, play a level or two, and back out. And with 35 missions in total, that's a good 5 to 6 hour playtime, and even longer if you want to max out your rankings, which, based on my experience, would prove to be quite a challenge. The game also runs extremely well, playing at up to 120 frames per second in 4K on my Xbox Series X, but you'll find the same performance over on the PS5, and on last gen, both Xbox One and PS4 versions run at 1080p 60 frames per second, and over on the Switch, it runs at 1080p 30 frames per second, which is still impressive for a handheld. The music, composed by Dan Rodriguez, is surprisingly great. I sometimes just sit at the menu and listen to the theme. There's no time to waste. When you're actually in the game battling hordes of Nephilim, the music builds up to an incredibly intense and bombastic level, which gets your blood pumping. So it's safe to say we've been having a great time playing the game, but is there anything that holds the game back from being flawless? As mentioned earlier, the game has couch co-op and it plays really well. But Jacob and I live in two different countries and have looked forward to playing together for years, only to find out on release that there's no online capabilities, meaning there's no way to play online with friends. This is a massive missed opportunity, as cooperative play is partially why games like this are so fun. There's also no survival mode, which seems like a no-brainer for something like this. Imagine a custom game creator where you can pick your city and duke it out with your friend to defeat endless Nephilim hordes. It's unfortunate that neither online capabilities or a survival mode are present in the game, but it's something that I hope is added down the line, because the game would really benefit from these features. The difficulty barrier is also something that I have worries about. There aren't any difficulty settings, and the game can be quite challenging at times, so I have fears that younger audiences, or those looking for a more casual experience, might not be able to get into it, which would be a shame because it would be sad if they had to miss out on it just because it was too much of a challenge. There's also been a few glitches I've encountered, mainly regarding audio. In levels that involve water, the sound effects of the monsters just seem to stop. I'm not sure if this is an issue isolated to the Xbox version of the game, but it's something that I hope is fixed sooner than later because it does get quite distracting. This game is unapologetically retro, looking to bring iconic beat-em-ups into the present day, with easy-to-comprehend mechanics, a great soundtrack, and badass monster mayhem, but unfortunately forgets to bring some of the advances that have become commonplace in the modern gaming world, such as online play. I would like to give Alex Rushdie a kiss for not including microtransactions, though. That's one modern aspect of gaming I'm happy to see absent. There's lots to love with this game, and I'm sure you'll have a blast playing it, either on your own or with a friend at home. It's something that I'm sure will satisfy Monster fans, because it's the closest thing we've had to an actual Godzilla game for a long time. We're going to give Dawn of the Monsters an 8 out of 10. I'd like to thank 13AM Games and Way Forward for providing me with a review copy of the game. Go pick up Dawn of the Monsters today, because you never know, maybe in the future they can make the next Godzilla game. So go support them. The game is available on Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, PC, and even Stadia. What do you think about the game? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you want to see more reviews like this, then leave a like, because it helps us know what you want to see more of. Be sure to subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.